All right, we're going to pre-spray the carpets real quick. I have to stay away from the spray because it atomizes a little bit, and I don't want it on the lens, so I'll show as much of it as I can with the ceiling fan on. It's going to make it worse. This is a nice fluffy carpet, but you can see it's not tucked down real well. When they installed it, they didn't get it tacked in as good as they probably could have, so it's a loose carpet. I'm glad we don't repair carpets. Yeah. Now some of you guys that want to get into carpet cleaning, if you want to get into carpet repairs, there's a lot of money in it if you want to fix them. A lot of carpet cleaners repair them, but a lot of people just clean them. We just clean them. Yeah, if you don't mind being down on your knees and doing that kind of work. Don't mind working. I mean, it's, it's a, uh, it's a, it pays quite a bit of money to do carpet repairs, actually. We, we ought to do it ourselves, we just don't want to. There's a plenty of good guys we can recommend to do it and contract them out and not do it ourselves. And even take a commission on their work, so. We're not motivated. Well, we'll put the word in if they want to have the carpet stretched and tacked back down again. If it, we'll tell the manager if they want to do it, they can. It'll help the carpet last longer if they keep it uh, properly installed. This is just a bad. This is just a thing where they didn't get it installed real tight in the first place. So who knows what's up with that? All right. All right. That's. Uh, I'm not going to show the pre-spray of the other room right now. We're going to go ahead and just clean this real quick. I'm not going to pre-spray the other room until I get to it anyway. All right. What do you got to do? Soak your bonnet? I just got to get it wet. Uh, yeah, now, if you want to use your bonnet to dry, you can. We use ours wet. There's nothing. I just personally believe that a wet bonnet dies faster, and if it dies faster, it works better. But, and if it's wet, it's less likely to cause friction damage right off the bathroom. Uh, Fr friction carpet. But yeah, and a wet bonnet isn't that wet. I mean, compared to running an extractor of some sort, you're still not putting down hardly any water with a wet bonnet. It doesn't stay so it doesn't stay soaking wet for very long. Okay, he's got that. I'm gonna go in here. Switch by. And this carpet's got some dirty areas, and there's some candy that's stuck in the carpet. We cut some of it out with some scissors, but. We'll see. There's a bare spot. We were told in the that this corner. Was real dirty, but this is what we. Yeah, they told us this is completely dirty, full of all sorts of colored stains. So. All kinds of mess in it. But if they want us to, we can always come back with a steamer and get some stuff out. The candy, if, if it doesn't, to. if it doesn't come out with the bonnet. It'll come out. Here we go. Right here. Oops. Oh, we got a bad outlet. Sure. Now the pre-spray we put down. What that does is that helps to break the bond, the chemical bond of the dirt and stains. To the carpet fibers and then they're suspended. All that dirt and everything is in suspension. So when you come along with a bonnet you absorb that stuff so you have to have suspension to get absorption. Uh, okay, and that's that's a real room. basic principle. But that's a, what we're there's doing a lot on top of this handle. I didn't look but you can see if your machine's turned on because the light turns on yep. on the switch so I just didn't pay attention. I'm used to no electrical outlets just working. And here we go. Let the party start. Now you don't have to go real slow on these. You you, uh, you can go pretty much as fast as they seem to be cleaning. Uh, when you're getting a stain, slow down a bit like that, and then keep moving. And if you want to go real slow like this the whole time, you can. Or you can go like this. Don't forget your closets in the hundred. Uh -huh. Here's the stain. Takes the stuff right out. Works every time like a charm. Now we're doing the we're doing this job today. The housekeeper isn't finished in here, so we may have to come back and fix up the carpets again. Yeah, they make a mess. A lot of times when you clean a carpet, sometimes they'll send people in to do something and they tear your carpet job up a little bit, and so you got to go back and redo some things. But it's no big deal. No big deal. Just part of life. And these carpets are a little rough, so. Hopefully this will make them look really nice. Now coming back and redoing things is okay with us because we charge for that, so I'll come back four or five times. <laughs> we don't mind, we don't complain, we just come back. And then we submit a bill. A little red stain. Okay, some of it came out. A lot of it did. They're not wanting to get it out, so we're not going to worry about it. I'll, I'll give what I can. When it comes to stain removals, well, we, our policy is 
we get out what we can with our actual procedures, the basic carpet cleaning, then we put our effort into it. We don't just give up real quick. We, we try. And if we can't get it out uh, with our basic carpet cleaning, then we charge extra uh, to get it out with That's uh, stain right there. With clothes iron and a clothes iron and some ammonia. Or the steamer. Or the steamer, yeah, whichever. But we try to take as many stains out for free as we can if we can take it out with our cleaning process uh, before we try to charge it. A lot of people will try to charge for every red stain. And we only charge if we can't get them out this way first. It helps the customers a little bit. And they appreciate you not getting over on, on, on everything you do. You want to charge good money on these jobs, but you don't want to take advantage of people. Well, people know That's when they're being, good. if people are being nickeled and dimed, they know it. And they they figure it out, and if they do, they'll get someone besides you because you did that to them. Yeah, if you don't have any competition, then you can do whatever you want, I suppose. If people are just stuck, they have to pay it if you have a monopoly. But, you know, most people have competitors, and even if you've been doing a great job for 20 years, as soon as you slack up a little bit, you're opening the door for people to come in and take you're, over. You're only as good as your last one. Yeah, there was a red stain that came right out. Oh, well, most of them will. Red stains are tricky. They can come out, and then a couple days later, they start to show back up again. So Normally, if they come out this way, they won't come back. But if they come out through extraction, they may come back if you got the pad wet because the stain will re-wick. But uh, when you get it out with this low moisture method, when you got it out, you got it out, generally. So I've never seen one resurface when we go on clean. Now, this carpet's a little bit finer texture than some of the ones we do. It has like a silky appearance to the fibers. And it, it shows tracks and stuff a lot worse than uh, some of the carpets we have that have a more coarse fiber. And so when we get done, we definitely want to have to rake these carpets to make them uh, even out. And they'll probably show uh, dark areas as the carpet areas were a little more, more damp than others will show up a little bit darker. So when we get them raked, at, at first they won't show an even appearance probably well, until the next day. If you're day. watching and pay attention, you'll notice I've never flipped the bonnet. And the reason why is they don't need flip. The way you can tell it's time to put the bonnet is when it starts seeming like it's not picking up well. It's just, it, it's not its not difficult. If you think you're not doing a good job, flip the bonnet. If you think you're still not doing a good job, get the bonnet wet and put it back down. That's really all there is to it. It's don't pretty simple. I don't think that's a gouge. Cigarette burn or something. Yeah, that's never coming out. That's a oh, good that looks pretty good. Let There's me, one. Let's go get the other. Let me go show the next one. Well, he's pre-spraying the next one. I'll probably rake that carpet real quick, make it look nice. I got a little cheese in there for temporary. All right. This other carpet is not too bad. Now there's some dried food right there, and there's a little bit of staining, but not too bad. But I'm gonna get out of here so I can get that other carpet rake. As soon as you can, I've got the machine sitting in the middle of the floor. Oh. Just wait. We'll get it at the end. I'll be done in five, six minutes. That's another thing about bonnet cleaning. It's very, it does a good job and it is fast. I got trapped in the room, so I got no choice but to just show a little spraying. Yeah, some people like to see spraying. There's all kinds of people on YouTube that like all kinds of videos. I saw someone once, he, watched, he likes to watch people turn on ceiling fans and elevators. and So spraying is really not that weird because there's a lot of stuff people like to see. It's whatever they like, you know? There's a lot of freaks out there. Well, it's just some people like certain things and some people like other. No, we have lots of people that love carpet raking. They love the sound of it. They like the looks of the carpet as it's being raked. And they like the way it sounds when the rake goes across it. That's what they really like. So we try to show that here and there for people. And if we can. Some people like the sound of vacuum cleaners. Some people hate the sound. Oh, hey, i got to get that closet. Oh, you didn't clean it yet? Okay. No, I forgot. Go see in this closet for me. Uh, you forget sometimes when you're talking on video, you're not thinking, so. But it don't matter as long as I remember. I make it a rule to try to never think while I'm talking on a camera. There because it's a lot more exciting to watch that way. One of the maintenance guys is looking over here with a puzzled look on his face. They are. So we may get interrupted. Uh, the front door's locked, so I don't think so. I always lock the doors in these places so people can't barge in on me in the middle of making a video. Oh, and when you got machinery running, equipment, back and stuff like that, it's nothing for people to walk in and grab an action camera and walk out. And nope. Things like that, so it's a good idea to secure your property. Yeah, lock your stuff up because you never know who will do what in a place like this. It's a weird world.
Everybody's a thief. Alright, All right, he's going to go clean that closet. <clears throat> then I'm going to turn I'm going to turn the camera off for just a break and we'll be right back to show this other room. This room. Yep. Alright, I raked this carpet. <clears throat> and it does have some evenness in it, uh, unevenness in it, and that's the moisture that's still in parts of the carpet. But it looks It'll dry good. pretty quick. When it dries, it's going to look perfect. Every, every stain come out. They typically always do. Alright, one more for the Orc Orger fans out there. Here it goes. Now we know some of you are watching these videos and you're sitting home next to your wife saying, Honey, I need to get one of those machines and get to doing that myself. You know what? You're right. You need to if you got a dead end job. This is the way out. This is a nice lifestyle. That's, Easy money. That's sexist. So, a lot of wives are sitting there telling their husband, Hey, I think I want to do this. You know? Well, maybe the wives need to, too. Remember, I'm showing how easy this thing is. The wife can handle this machine. It's not like you got to be strong. And I apologize again for the sexist comments that my brother's well, making. Well, you, if you want out of a, you know, a dead-end job, jump on in. Go to our Amazon link, and you'll see the stuff to get. We have it all there, so you can find it quite easy. The oil program, vacuum cleaners, whatever, all the stuff you need. Get in business tomorrow. Or as soon as Amazon sends the stuff to you, which will be about a week or so from now. Get it off our link and help us out a little bit, and we've helped you out a little bit. We know a lot of people have started businesses based off watching these videos because they told us so that they bought these machines and are having the time of their lives. So uh, it's almost like we ought to be selling franchises. Trying to find the best angle to show. Kind of got a funny day with the yeah, overcast this is the guy. I'll try to go this way so I'm not casting across the picture. A little blown out. And look how beautiful the carpet looks. You know how often they look like this? Every single time. I was say, <laughs> never. Never ever. Oh, they always look good. Bonnet cleaning is the way to do them all, I'll tell you. If the people want to debate that, they can stick with extraction. Let's we'll stick with this and we'll have a lot more prettier carpets every year than they do. Well, we got to get these carpets dry because the housekeeper's going to have to get back in here today. And if we did the extraction, then it'd be where he could come in here, but he can't walk on the carpets very much. These carpets would be dry in an hour, so enough to even walk on them. You can walk all over. We're gonna get them all raked up perfect, and then he's gonna come in here and walk, walk all over them. Because I think he still has to clean. Maybe he did clean the bathroom in there all right. But it's just this simple. Now, when we're talking to you guys, we're not bragging. We're just telling you how good it is. We want to see you do it for yourself. I've had dead-end jobs when I was younger. That's, that's for the birds. Uh, being self-employed is everything. Well, this carpet cleaning really isn't as difficult in most instances as some people may. It's not difficult at all. Try to make you think. And so people are intimidated thinking you have to have, you have, to have a truck mount. And you've got to have this and you've got to have that. And those things are nice if you can afford them, but you don't have to have the money to afford you that never, sort of thing. You never have to have that stuff. You, you don't have to ever have it. That's true. No. Now, if people get to where they're doing 10 jobs a day, that's when stuff like that comes into play. And, you know, because you want to be able to go faster than you can go with the I smaller truck. I think the truck are worth their weight in gold. And for go, flood cleanup, you know. Flood. <clears throat> Yeah, there's nothing, we would never say truck mounts are not good machines, no, they, they are. they're great, they're, they're awesome. But the problem is a lot of the people just, that use them, a, a lot of the people that use them aren't particularly good cleaners. And they think the truck mount makes up for the fact that they go super fast and they, they don't do a very good job. And there's some real good guys on YouTube, and if you see that we subscribe to them, those are good guys and they use truck mounts and they're real good. I would yeah. never insult their workers, they do excellent, excellent work.
Okay, he's going to wrap up all the cords and stuff. I'm going to get that carpet raked as soon as I can. And, and we're out of here. We'll show you. I guess I'll shoot a video real quick of the last final result. Let's see, this is. This one here looks pretty good. Alright. Just uh, the next thing coming up will be the final result on that room. Alright, final results on the other room. Again, any dark areas you see, the carpet's in the process of drying because it's fresh done. Looks pretty good. Alright, I hope you enjoyed the video. Stay tuned for the next one. Thanks for watching.